Hey everybody, this is Sully with 5 Freaking Onion Rings, and DaVinci Resolve 18.1 just dropped, and it has some amazing effects, such as Sky Replacement. So we're going to run through Sky Replacement really fast. <laughs> Not kind of. We're going to run through Sky Replacement. Uh, in the first few seconds, you'll get the idea, but if you want to stick around for extra functionality of it, that would be wonderful. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found any value in this. So here is our first video. We're going to drop it on the timeline, and it is the grayest sky on the grayest day. It's actually raining here, and um, we're going to change that sky. That's all. So drop it on your timeline. You click over on the color tab. Then in settings, search, you want sky replacement. Now you drop it into the area. Don't drop it onto the clip. And to use sky replacement, it's pretty simple. You have to go to the node before and go to your picker then you want the 3d picker so you can get a line and you want to draw and make a fairly good mask and while you're drawing you can see the mask getting a little bit clearer or not that one looks good to me if you notice it had a tiny bit of spot there but that's okay because it'll show us a bit of a reflection of the sky then you want to connect your alpha nodes to come over to here and you'll see that you have some fringing and white outlines and whatnot. And that can be taken care of either on this pre-filtering. You can take care of most of the fringing in pre-filtering. Or you can drop your white clip back slightly. I uh, need to do that anyway to get more of the gray out of there. Your in-out ratio. I don't normally touch that one because it, it gets to be a little more severe. But nope, in this case it's, it's actually helpful. Uh, shadows. What I'm saying is you want to adjust your mask to make it as good as you can. Highlights. Highlights is another area I definitely want. And you'll see a gray fringing there and that's looks like it'll be a problem but it's not and I'll show you. And then post filtering this just softens things up a bit. So in this case I need just a slight bit. You'll see it, it makes a drastic change at some point. It's just like bam it just changes over right there but that's exactly what I need. And if you don't want to use this way you can actually go to sky replacement and sky mask adjustments and refine here. Refining here though is severe so the instant that turns on it makes a big change and you can see it flipping back and forth there like I lose branches and whatnot but that is a good way to do a quick adjustment if you need to. Preview mask can show you uh, exactly what you're doing and see I want those branches to be seen just so it doesn't look fake because if you go too much it will look fake and the good thing is no matter what you do if you don't like how it looks in the end you can just change it quickly and quickly is the word here now first off we're going to do an artificial sky sorry about that DaVinci built in artificial sky and to see it you click preview or you don't even have to preview but you turn your sky opacity up and there you go and immediately I have an artificial sky and it looks fairly good to start with that is actually not bad at all to adjust it though I can change where my horizon is if I wanted it to be an afternoon type of horizon I can actually change the horizon color to make it a little bit let's say a little more pink or whatnot you know give it a little bit of a a little bit of a hue, make it look realistic. I can do that. I can change my sky color slightly. So if I want, like, I'm actually in a Carolina blue. So we, we have a darker blue than almost everybody else when we do. But that looks more like an evening shot. You know, a little bit warmer colors and whatnot. You can change your horizon height. So if you want it to be a little more. I normally pick, like, just over. So it takes care of some of that fringing I was talking about earlier. I know this isn't quite there yet, but it's pretty good. And uh, if you want clouds, you can do cloud opacity. And bam, I just added in some clouds. You can change their shape. And shape, you can see it just does this little weird thing. Like it's, it's an image and so it'll adjust the... It just makes it taller or shorter. Not a big deal. I just want some clouds. You know, some nothing. Not a big deal. There we go. Just something in the sky make it look good uh, detail you can turn up if you got those weird clouds I like those clouds sometimes sometimes I don't sometimes you just want a blob um, I try to get a little bit of a deformed informed cloud and cloud fill again you can make a ton or you can make one you know a few 
And there you go. Contrast, you can turn it up or down. Basic, simple things here. And that already looks better. Uh, there is a hot spot, so if you do have a sun or something and you want to put it in, or if you just want something, you can change it. Uh, I wouldn't advise doing a color though, so I would leave the color stock. It's a little bit of an orange thing. It normally works like it's the sun behind a cloud. I don't really like the hot spot unless I do have a sun in the shot, you know. Normally that, that means you have to have shadows somewhere and things work. Now the important parts here are really cool. Uh, so that looks good enough, but if you hit play, you're going to see a weird effect. And that is kind of screwy. So they added in tracking. So all you have to do is click track foreground for sky position. And you'll see up here, it looks like it's moving an image. Uh, so it looks awkward. Again, you got this little black thing coming down. It looks weird, but you can adjust for size. And now you have, I would say a relatively good you know, now you don't know that it's actually a... You wouldn't know that that is taken from that. So I took the grayest day ever, made it kind of sunny, a little brighter, makes everything look a little happier. Now, if I wanted to change my foreground, I can, even on the sky replacement, there's foreground appearance, and you can adjust. Sometimes you, you want to do global apply or match horizon. Uh, when you do a, a fake one, it doesn't work well because it's just adding a color. But you can adjust your brightness a bit. You can adjust saturation. In this case, I'd, I would kind of want some more saturation or a little bit warmer just to give it like a nice sunnier feel like it was out. That actually looks... I'm happy with that. Heck, I'm happier with that than I was with anything. Now, you will see a little bit up here... It'll pop out as, uh, let's increase this. A little bit of fringing up here, like I was saying, from that mask not being perfect. So if you do see that, this is where you can come in here and refine it just slightly, and that helps. And I would rather have a blurry lens than something that, you know, like that looks like it's a lens that wasn't quite as sharp as it could be but that's better than having like the halo effect that stands out um, so it kind of anti-aliases it so that you don't see a problem uh, so that you don't see that there's a white halo and that you obviously replace the background so we turn it off that looks okay that looks okay go back to fit hit p to do full screen and for my money that is an easy sky replacement now if you want to really sell the effect a little bit more there is one other thing you have, which is cloud time. So if you have someone who is just nitpicking you to death, you set your keyframe for cloud time at where it starts. You go at the beginning of the frame. At the end of the frame, you make a minor adjustment. I mean, in this case, I'm doing like 0.3. And that's just enough so that if someone's looking at your clouds closely, your clouds actually will sh change shape. So if you have a long enough clip, you know, you might actually expect to see clouds morph and evolve and you can see it will, it changes shape. So if you're, you can even fake a time lapse if you want. So if I really wanted to screw with someone's head, uh, let's see, if I wanted to screw with someone's head, I could put this as, a, as one spot, put this as another and you would see clouds going through. That's not as realistic as it could be, but if you've ever seen uh, some of the clouds building up on time lapses, that's actually pretty cool. But for me, I just like to, I have a lot of nitpickers, so if you find a spot where you're like, I like that cloud the way it looks, and you go to the end, that was 337. If you go to the end, you do 0.339. Zero point three three nine. It makes just enough of a difference in the clouds that they morph just slightly. They slightly grow. It's just enough. If you do too much, you will see. You know, in this this is a two second clip. So if you do it like too much, you'll see a cloud change too much, and it's just a little interesting. But that's the easiest way to, to replace your sky with all the little adjustments. Now, let's say you do this and you don't want to generate a sky and you find a very pretty sky that you want to use. So let's say I want to use this sky. I just found it online. 
I don't know whose picture this is. I do apologize for that. But let's say I took a pretty picture of a sky, and I wanted to use that one. All you have to do is drag it over here, link it up, go back to your artificial sky, turn your opacity down. Suddenly I get the new clouds, which looks pretty dramatic, a little, little more dramatic than I want. So let's go to, let's go to source sky appearance up here, drop down, and you can change your detail. So yeah, we don't really want that much detail, but we can definitely lighten it up a good bit and turn the brightness up, turn saturation down a little bit. Temperature, you can change slightly. Tint, opacity is where I want to make this look a little more realistic. In this case, that's actually not bad either. Once again, yeah. And it just gives you a little bit of clouds. Now this one you can't do motion on, but it does track towards it. And you'll see a tiny halo effect right there, which is you want to get rid of. But again, that's mostly just refine, uh, refine in the opposite direction. Yep, that makes sense. Hit P, see full screen, and you'll see it's not too bad. For a very simple couple of minutes sky, that is not bad at all. And if you see anything that you don't like, you can just change your mask slightly to... Yep, that's all I needed. Just a tiny bit there and there. Keep things from flickering. And we're in good shape, so that is how you change. Now, on top of all of that, I know I'm going longer than I said for my 10 second. Hope you get the gist by now. But let's say you want to change your foreground in ways more than just this little brightness, saturation, temp adjustment, because that, that foreground doesn't look good. You just go up to your node, right click, add a node, add serial, put one in between. And this is one where you can change your, do your normal color adjustments. So as long as you have, you want your mask first, your mask sending its alpha to the sky replacement, your picture actually goes through its image adjustments and you can make all of your adjustments as you want, which in this case I want more colorful because I like color. And I have a 10-bit camera now, so I can definitely crank some colors up. Or I could go the opposite way and you know drop colors if you wanted to. Um, if you do that though, let's say I drop colors, you would want to change your source guy appearance and you just drop saturation even more so now i can make it like a hazy afternoon sun or i can make it super dramatic or not dramatic at all and that is how you turn a sky from gray and actual rain hard to believe but that's how you go from let's do gray sky i mean that is the grayest sky ever to kind of pretty that's a little overdone, but I hope you get the point for it. Now, another one I've done already, finished out, it's the same thing. Using the same effects, we went from gray overcast, this is actually a 7 p.m. shot, to a nice, pretty, easier shot. Uh, in this case, it was a static camera, so you didn't have to track, but the method was still the exact same. I wanted to show, I used the exact same method to get my clouds, get it over the housing, everything's happy, 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 happy. And in this case, you can do match horizon and you'll get this super dramatic effect. You can brighten it up a little bit. But because the horizon on this picture is a little darker, it will, you can get super dramatic and get whatever. So if you do have a perfect picture that you want to use, like, I love this, I like this picture, but see how the horizon has some color in it and it has a little bit more dramatic. It will actually apply that in your picture to what your, what your actual foreground is. So if you can line up what you are trying to do as your end product, this makes it very easy to just match the horizon. Global Apply just puts basically the colors on the same thing. It's not, not quite as good, but Match Horizon I do like because you can get some really good effects, uh, assuming your picture is exactly what you want. But in this case, you probably wouldn't know that I wasn't in a beach town. I like it. So that's going to do it. 
And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found any value in this. If you did not find value in this, tell me why and I will be glad to adjust because I got some adjustment in my hair and other things I need to do, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, we always have things to work on. But anyway, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Sky Replacement. And as always, thank you so much. Love y'all. Y'all have a good one. Be good. Be good at it.